Okay, you guys, let's take this video and talk about the thing that matters the most, you. Your experience and your healing from the toxic things that narcissistic people have done. So my name is Lise Colucci and you know the drill. I'm here to help you understand it and heal from the toxic relationships and narcissists who have been in your life. So, okay. Coping with triggers can be a really big deal for people who have experienced narcissistic people manipulating them in their lives. So you guys stay tuned. I'm going to give you a brief description of what happens when you're triggered. But the most important part of this video comes in the second half, which is what to do about those triggers. Coping with triggers is kind of huge. Most of us have triggers. Most people get triggers from experiences that they've had in life, right? That remind them of bad things or hard things or whatever. When you've had continual emotional manipulation going on in relationships, and those are relationships that you've poured your heart out into or you were raised by, those triggers are in everyday life things. They're in the way we operate in life, the things we see in life, the words we hear, the smells, the sounds, right? It's in all of our senses and it's in all of our daily routine. So let's talk about how to cope with these triggers a little bit before we go on. So you know what is available to you. There is coaching, group coaching and peer support. Information is in the main description of every video. You can always email me coachlyc.com and if you need it, it's there. Okay. So let's continue. When you're triggered, what is called a trigger, your limbic system is activated. And what that means is you are having an instinctive response to very high stress. Now, the thing that's creating all of that can be the smallest thing. You see a certain color car drive by, you hear a sound, you hear a song, you know, it doesn't have to be high stress things that activate this limbic system. When you have had emotional abuse and when you have CPTSD from being in toxic relationships or being raised by toxic people, anything can be a trigger that your brain, body, emotions, and entire being takes in as high stress, right? And so boom, you're thrown into what's known as fight flight, right? Fight flight, freeze fawn. That is the response that we take when we've had that limbic system activated. Everyone's going to have their own flavor version and way this looks for themselves. Okay, so I'm just going to talk really generally here. Basically, when you're in that state, your amygdala is taken over. And that's a part of your brain that is meant to help you run from tigers, run from scary things. Make sure you stay safe, survive. Okay. When that's taken over, the rest of your brain is sort of offline for a second. It is way in the background running its processing, but it isn't what's taking on your thoughts. It isn't what's taking the direction of how you're thinking and acting. Now, when this is activated, there's other things that happen in your body. Your cortisol starts rising. Your adrenaline starts pumping. Okay. If you've ever had like a jump scare, right? And you get like that and you get a little adrenaline rush, you know, it takes what about five, 10 minutes before you feel calm again. Now imagine if this is happening. Well, don't have to imagine you've experienced it. When this is happening from a trigger, it's bigger than a little jump scare. It is a full body experience and you have a lot of adrenaline coursing through you. So understand that. The reason I'm telling you all of this is because understanding the pieces of the trigger can help you function outside of the trigger. The thing about healing from toxic relationships and why I am always saying, please come to the group coaching, please get yourself help in some way with someone that gets it because understanding how to work with these pieces for yourself is individual. There isn't one way. And also there's a lot of really general ways that can help you. And I try to give a lot of it here. So let's keep going. If you're wanting more videos about you and helping you to understand what's going on with yourself and heal from it, hit the thumbs up. So, okay. Understanding these responses is only one piece. Understanding that, okay, something triggered me, whatever it was. Understanding that you're in a triggered state, your limbic system has taken over, your amygdala is in charge, the rest of your mind is following what your amygdala says to do, which is run, freeze, you know, fight, flight, freeze, or fun. And then you feel a little bit out of control probably right now. You feel panicked, anxious, scared, stressed, shut down, disassociated. You know, that's just a few ways that you might be experiencing this trigger. 
and none of it feels fantastic. So what do you do? So over and over and over, you may hear, practice mindfulness, practice mindfulness, do meditations, find ways to relax. Okay, I know it gets old. You hear it over and over again, but guess what? It's kind of necessary. Learn for yourself what that means. There is no one way to meditate. People say, I don't know how to meditate. Guess what? If you don't know, you can learn. And it isn't something that you have to do in the way that somebody else does it, okay? There's a whole lot of ways to become mindful. The simplest way is to just take a breath in and exhale. Give yourself 10 seconds. When you are feeling triggered or if you experience a trigger and you're calming down, especially, and you're like, okay, I need to get, I need to get myself together here, right? Take, a, take some deep breaths in and exhale. Pay attention to your body. Relax every part of your body. Sit down somewhere comfortable, relax every part of your body. Tell yourself you're safe if you are, okay? Find a safe place to be so that this can be a reality. So that for the next 10 seconds, you are safe, you are breathing, and that is all that matters, okay? That form of very simple mindfulness signals your brain, okay, limbic system, thank you, all done, and you can go back to normal functioning. It may take a minute, it may take practice, and it may take repeated efforts, but you see, the whole thing about the triggers is that at this point in your life, most likely they are now habit and they are now where you go instantly when you have these experiences, okay? So untraining it, retraining yourself to calm down afterward or to calm down during, kind of important. Another basic thing you might've heard a million times is pattern interrupt, okay? You're triggered, you're all worried, you're concerned, you're freaked out, you're, you're repeating and looping thoughts, you can't stop, okay? Look around the room and find seven green things, find 10 yellow things, find eight round things, whatever it is, pick and choose, change it up. Bring yourself back to the moment. It is a form of mindfulness, but get out of that thought process. You cannot heal the problem from the problem. If you're in the mode of thinking of trigger, you're not going to be very effective in healing the, the mind and the body and the emotions from that trigger. You either have to wait it out, however long that is for you, or you can start applying techniques and that's what I'm suggesting here. So let's get to a few more. So back to the pattern interrupt. You can do simple things like if you're sitting, stand up. If you're in the house, go outside. If you're outside, come inside. If you're whatever, you know what I mean? Changing the actual location of your body and what your body's doing can interrupt the pattern of thought. If you're having ruminating thinking, this can be really effective because you are physically making yourself do something different, which requires a little bit of concentration from a different place, not from the looping thoughts. A lot of people really love mantras and affirmations. I just made a short video of affirmations. Go watch that, listen to it on repeat, Speak it out loud for yourself with me. Look in the mirror while you're listening to it and speak it out loud. Those can help you, especially if you're trauma bonded and you're trying to get away, but you're still feeling triggered and wanting to go back to the toxic person. Moving your body can help. Get out, take a walk, do some yoga, do some stretching, whatever it is, dance around your house, okay? Do some movement of the body to help release and sort of shake off that adrenaline response and that trigger, really important. Try to resist judging yourself. Try to resist engaging in the fear of the trigger. Don't be afraid of having the triggers, okay? Totally normal for people to have triggers, especially when they've had this kind of situations and abuse in their life. So allowing the trigger as part of your recovery and your healing so you can find what works for you to help you personally and individually move through these triggers quicker, simpler, and, and with more ease. If you're resisting, if you're afraid of them, if you are fearing having to do the work to get there, that becomes a battle in itself. And so then you become fixated on the triggers, which makes more triggers and it makes more issues for you in your healing. So here's some aftercare for triggers. Once you've calmed down, you've gotten back into your body, you know, once you're like, focused on your reality now, give a quick reflection about that trigger. Was I actually in danger? Was I actually whatever the trigger was about? Or 
Was it a memory that I was having? And was I trying to process it? Sometimes these triggers are our brains, bodies, and emotions trying to process what has happened. And when we resist and fight them, we're sort of stopping our progress from processing it. We gotta feel to heal and sometimes you gotta move through these things. So understanding, was this a trigger or was I processing? So asking yourself questions can be really helpful. What was that about? Why did that happen? Was I really in danger? What options did I have in that moment? How next time can I better use self-care or try to find things to help me calm down sooner? And here's the last thing. If you are still in contact with a narcissistic person, the contact, the conflict, the, the whole dynamic with narcissists and toxic people is re-traumatizing, it isn't triggering. So understand the difference between re-traumatization and triggers. Triggers are random things out in the world that have nothing to do with the issue that you have had happen, reminding you of that issue. And a re-traumatization is when you are back in the drama with a toxic person or other people who are similar doing the same thing to you. And so your brain then doesn't have a chance to heal. We'll talk about re-traumatizations in another video, you guys. As always, check out the info in the main description if you need anything, and I'll see you next time.